All right. Well, good evening. Welcome to First Baptist Church, Bay St. Louis. Welcome to our evening Bible study, Wednesday night Bible study, and prayer time. Uh, I want to invite you to open your Bible to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. I want to look at the Ten Commandments quickly. Uh, think about those and then jump to the New Testament for some, an encur- some encouragement on how to uh, not only obey those Ten Commandments, but also obey some other commandments that the Lord Jesus has given us. I had a book that uh, Pastor handed me recently, actually on Monday. It's called These Are the Generations, as told uh, by Mr. and Mrs. Bay. That's a fake name, by the way. As told by the Reverend Eric Foley. And so Pastor handed me this, and it's about a family in North Korea that has maintained their faith throughout four generations, which is very rare to find that in North Korea. And it's a powerful story, and um, I read, it's not that big of a book. You can read it probably the entire thing in about four hours, but I've almost read all of it, and it just so encouraged me in the Lord and provoked my thoughts about the Ten Commandments because believers in North Korea that's lived under a, an oppressive regime for so many years, those believers, their mindset is so different than anyone else, that, so different than ours. And so they, they don't have all of the pieces of the faith, a lot of them, uh, but they have the, the main things. And so they've heard about Jesus, they know about the blood of Jesus, they know salvation, Jesus is the way. Old Testament, uh, they, it's very rare for them to have even an entire Bible. So they have pieces. It's like a piece of a puzzle. And for them, uh, they don't even get to see the front you know, like you have a puzzle box that you put together, and we always do what? We look at the, the, the box, right? We look at the picture of the puzzle as we're putting it together. And so for many North Koreans, they don't get to see that front of that box. All they have is those pieces of the puzzle, and they're putting it together slowly over time. And so there's, it's, such, uh, it's so locked down. There, there's so many spies. Uh, Christianity is the, the most worst, you know, for the the state, the greatest enemy in their country is Christianity. They're afraid of it. Um, and so, one example, when a man marries a woman, it takes years for that woman and that man to trust each other, to talk about everything when it, concerning their faith. Because, should one of them get afraid and turn the other one in, they could die, their children could die, and all of their extended family pass, even multiple extended families, um, even down to like your second and third cousins could be thrown in prison just because you were found being a part of the faith. Now, can you imagine not even being able to talk about your faith with your spouse until you've built up trust you know, over five, six years? It's incredible uh, to think about that. But they... That's, that's right. Absolutely. So Exodus chapter 20, uh, God gave some important uh, commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai. And Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 says, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall not have no other gods before me. Okay, what does that mean? That's the first commandment. It means exactly what it says, to not worship anything else other than the Lord. And God told us before that, he says, I'm the Lord your God. I'm the Yahweh. I'm the creator God. Then he says, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that's in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath and that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them for, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. And then if we jump down to verse 7, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. This is a commandment from the Lord. Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. We know this is God's commandment for his people. Look at verse 12, honor your father and your mother. 
Look at verse 13. You shall not murder. Wow. Verse 14. You shall not commit adultery. Verse 15. You shall not steal. Verse 16. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Verse 17. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Okay? And so we have all of these commandments. Now, is this all the commandments in the Old Testament? No. Are there more commandments in the New Testament? Absolutely. There are so many uh, commandments that God's given us. He's given us the law. And why did God give us the law? Anybody? Well, if our society obeys God's laws, it's going to be better for us as a people of God, right? There's going to be more justice. There's going to be uh, better economics. uh, More people lived out of poverty if you do things God's way. But in addition to that, the law is like a mirror. When we look into the law, what do we find out for our own selves? That's right, that we need a Savior, that we are not perfect, we have heart issues, and we were born into that. We have this old flesh. And so, how does it make you feel? Do you remember somebody teaching you these as a child, or you've heard these commandments before? How does it make you feel? And, and you know, you can even do the test. How are you doing on following these, just these Ten Commandments here in Exodus 20? And then you think about the greatest commandment that Jesus mentioned in Matthew 22. If you wanted to turn there, you could see uh, they asked a question to the Lord, the disciples, what's the greatest commandment? And what did the Lord say? Love the Lord. Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And essentially, he's just saying, love God. So if we just, to oversimplify that, love God, right? Love the Lord with everything that's inside of you. That's the greatest commandment. Okay, so there's another commandment. We've been given by God an expectation. And then he says there's a second greatest commandment, and it's like it. And what is it? To love your neighbor as yourself. You say, man, you hadn't seen my neighbors. No, I haven't. But God says that you're supposed to love them. Uh, It doesn't say you have to agree with everything they do. when They try to put their fence on your, your property. God's not saying that but he's saying you should love them we should love people so these are commandments would you say just being very honest that this is difficult to do all of God's commandments anybody it's hard right what makes it so hard what makes it so hard and let's, let's throw in this commandment, this great commission commandment. Go, therefore, and make disciples of, wouldn't it be nice if he just said Mississippi or Georgia, wherever you're from, wherever you live? He didn't say that, did he? He says, all nations. Well, thanks, Lord. Thanks for making that seem impossible. <laughs> so how are you doing on all those? How are we doing following these commandments? It's, it, it's so difficult when you think of, these commandments. And I want to take you to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, the Lord says this statement, and you've heard, uh, many have heard me share this verse before and the following verses, but I just think John 14 is uh, is probably my favorite chapter in all the Bible. Uh, It's just a special, special chapter that God's used in my own life, but the Lord one time, he says this statement, and I just think it had to devastate the disciples. He says in John chapter 14, Chapter 14, verse 15, he says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. They had given up everything. I mean, their bags were already packed. They signed up to serve the Lord. They left. Uh, They may have missed some holidays with their family. Uh, Many of them probably sold some property. They made arrangements. They may have not sold everything. Uh, We know Peter had a house and... Um, they left, some of them were married, some of them weren't. But they had, they had obligations that they were involved in, and, and they gave up a lot of things to follow the Lord. 
Jesus told them they had to drop everything, leave everything behind to follow him. And so here these guys were, they dedicated to the Lord for three years, and they had been following him around, and, and all of a sudden, the man they had given their very lives to looks at them and says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Ouch. That had to hurt. That had to hurt. Now, that's the, that's the verse that can discourage you. But the second part of this, if you keep going, you find out the solution. You find out the encouragement, and then the disciples, over time, it all makes sense. Now look what he says in verse 16. After they feel the weight of trying to follow the commandments. He says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. What does your translation say in your Bible? It says the same thing, right? You might have a different word, helper. Absolutely. To be with you, how long is the helper going to be with you? He's going to be with you for a few months, a few years, forever. Wow, he's the spirit of truth. And so the problem with us as believers in America it's not that we are ignorant of knowledge. We have knowledge. We have God's Word, Genesis to Revelation. But we're ignorant many times of faith in the words that we have. We have the words of knowledge. We have what Jesus told us. But how this translates into our life and how we just maintain exercising our faith and how these verses apply to our life, we lose that sometimes. And then therefore we start living our lives like the Holy Spirit is not with us all the time when Jesus told us that he would be. And so I just want to remind you something you've heard, from, many of you have heard uh, many times your whole life, but I, I just want to remind you that verse 17 says, Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now, what does that verse tell us? What is some truth in that verse that, that says about the Holy Spirit and how he relates to us? What do you see? Where does the Holy Spirit dwell? In you, in the believer. He's talking specifically to the disciples. Are you a disciple of Jesus? Yes, you are. Have you signed up to accept the Lord? Absolutely. Absolutely. So Jesus is in you. Paul called this a great mystery, mind-bottling truth. You want to merit, think on that. So he dwells with you, and he will be in you. So he's with you. He dwells with you, and he's in you. Now, do you ever get lonely? I do. Do you ever get lonely? Yeah. That's, that's something that happens to people on this earth. Do you ever get afraid? Yeah. How are we going to make ends meet? How, how's my child going to survive going through this experience? Or how is my family member who has been diagnosed with this? How, how are we going to make it? Real things for real people have to deal with. And yet, the Lord has promised us that he's with us and he's in us. So we have his presence. And... Oftentimes, we hear that and we just think, well, that's just such a wonderful thought. But then we really don't take that to heart because there we lack faith. We lack faith. And many times we don't even believe it. We read it, but we don't believe it. And I'll just tell you, if we'll believe this, it'll certainly make you feel better. <laughs> uh, the Lord didn't tell you you're going to feel the fuzzies all the time. But if you just base your life on the truth of God's word. Just the truth of that helper being with you all the time. Well, I don't feel like he's with me. I've been in some places I just don't feel like, I feel like the Lord left me. No, friend, he's never left you. His eyes on the sparrow and his eyes on you. So we have that presence. And so how are we going to accomplish this great commission? How are we going to accomplish loving the Lord? How are we going to accomplish loving each other? How are we going to accomplish honoring the Lord uh, above everything on the seventh day? How are we going to not commit adultery? How are we going to not bear false witness? How are we going to do all these things that God has told us to do? We simply 
let the Lord do it through us. We've got to die to that old man and let Christ live his life through us. This is the Christ life. This is the abundant life. This is a uh, spirit-filled life. Dr. Bill Bright used to talk about founder of Campus Crusade for Christ. Number two, in verse 20, we see that we have, once again, the power of Christ. Verse 20, that Jesus, verse 19, yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. So Jesus is saying, I'm going to go away. Verse 20, in that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. Now, if you look at the language there in that day, Jesus is referencing a future event that takes place. Anybody want to guess what he's talking about? The day of Pentecost, right? day of Pentecost comes, and he comes in tongues of fire. Everybody say fire. Fire. Do you like fire? Do you like to play with fire? No, you don't like fire? Fire's dangerous, right? Don't let your children play with fire or your grandchildren. So he, he mentions this enormous occasion for the church the day of Pentecost has impacted your life whether you know it or not that day when the Spirit of God came has impacted your life and so that was the power of God and so you have the power of God in you so when we think of now let's think about those commandments we're thinking Old Testament commandments for those of you that just arrived we're thinking Old Testament commandments right you got all of them in your head it's a lot of them not bear false witness, keep, the, keep an honor the Sabbath day, uh, don't lie, don't steal, don't murder, right? Worship the Lord God, number one, don't have any idols, just go down the list, don't be envious. And then we've got our New Testament commandments, go therefore to all nations, boy that's a big one, right? Talked about it, tough. Love everybody, you mean everybody? No way. You mean the people on the radical left, the radical right, you mean all the crazy politicians you mean all the people that want to destroy other people yeah yeah we God God loves them too he's also going to bring justice to all people but he loves people it's very clear and he wants us to, he's commanded us to love them as we love ourselves so we got all these commandments that man these this is strong so how do we get there because we've got the Lord's power within us if you try to depend on your own power your own strength to love people that hate your guts, to, uh, to be able to do the things that God's asked you to do. What about just telling somebody about the Lord? What about inviting somebody to your church? That can be hard. Now, some of you may not have a problem. It may be just come, come very natural to you. You've been doing it a long time. It's very easy for you to say, hey, we'd love to see you come to worship with us Sunday morning. We, we'd love to see you. You know what? If you don't have a ride, I can pick you up. So some of you, that's easy. But some of you, that's really out of your comfort zone, right? Like, man, to ask somebody to come to church with me? Uh, it's, I, I don't really do that, right? Well, it's, it's, it, it is difficult if we're being totally tr honest about it. But the good news is we have the power of the Lord inside of us. So that should cancel out the excuse, right? We've got the Lord's power. You look at the verses that talk about same spirit that rode Jesus from the dead. Boom. Inside of you? And you're going to talk about being afraid? I don't think so. That doesn't fly anymore. you got the spirit of God in you. But what you have to do is you have to have faith to exercise that belief that the power of God is in you. And he's available to help you. You mean that God wants to help little old me? Yes, he wants to help you. That's what Jesus is telling the disciples. He says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to help you. I'm sending the helper. And the Holy Spirit, it's not like uh, right now, I know Star Wars are being shown, I think, on one of the TNT channels or whatever for free, like all the Star Wars. And uh, so Star Wars is all about the force, right? It's the force with you. Well, the Holy Spirit, he's even better than the force in Star Wars. He's not a force. He is a force, but he, he's a person, right? And the Holy Spirit has never lost a battle. In Star Wars, the force sometimes is there, or sometimes he's not, and so he's, you just never know if the force is going to show up to help them, right? Sometimes they're flying a spaceship through the universe, and you get shot down, and they think, well, where was the force then? <laughs> well, in, in our life, Jesus, the, the Spirit, is always with us. So we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, yet they're all one. They're all 
one. So when we talk about God as believers, if we're biblical, we're, when we say just general God, now you may be thinking God the Father, but really you could be talking about God the Father, God the Son, or God the Holy Spirit. How do we know who you're talking about? Which, which part of God, the Godhead are you talking about? And the truth is, if you say God, you know who you're talking about? You're talking about God, who exists in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And they're all three have all the attributes of the Godhead, which is amazing when you think about it. And so you, we have this power inside of us and with us to accomplish everything that the Lord uh, tells us to do. Amazing quote. There were some American uh, believers talked to some North Korean Christians. And it says this, this quote that we often do when we meet people going through trials. It's just natural for us. We say, well, how can we pray for you? How can we pray for the North Korean Christians? And they answered, a specific group of North Korean underground believers, they answered this way, and I think it's funny. They said, pray for us. We pray for you. <laughs> pray for us. Man, we've been praying for you. You're on our prayer list over in America. And so the, the American Christians, they said, well, why? And this is what they said said, because Christians in the West still have some wealth and freedom and power. Most have not yet experienced what it is like when all you have in life is God. Wow. When you have nothing else but the Lord, He becomes real in a whole new way. When you have nothing else, when you have no food, you have no safety, you have no comforts, all you have is the Lord, then you tap into that power. I'm telling you, you tap into something else. When you come to the end of yourself, right? We, I, I told Dustin, who tonight's about to spend two hours with teenagers, and, and I said, hey, you know, I've been going 12 hours every day for kids camp this week, and and uh, it's time to dig down deep, you know, got to go, got to push through. And, and I told him, I said, now you're about to tap into that Holy Spirit power. You know, you're the end of yourself totally, and now you're going to tap into something special. And that's what happens. When we run out of our own resources, we got to depend on the Lord. And that can be a really positive thing. Power of the Lord. Have you seen God's power in your life? Well, he's there. Why are we not seeing God's power? I think it's because we lose the faith in God's power. And I think that's offensive to the Lord. I think that's offensive to the Holy Spirit. Because he's here, he's available, he's wanting to work through us, he's told us he wants to, but we're not even giving him a chance. We're just assuming it's all up to us, which is not New Testament Christianity. It's independent from Christ <laughs> Christianity. And that's not, that's not it. And that's hard, to try to live the Christian life apart from the Lord's help. That's not at all what Jesus had in mind. Jesus had in mind that he's going to come back from the dead. He's alive. He's going to heaven. Then he's sending the helper so that Jesus can continue to live his life on this earth through us. Jesus is still doing his thing on this earth. He's still living on this earth 2,000 years later, and he's living through you. And me. So this is how we accomplish all of these great commandments where we feel, oh, how am I going to do this? By leaning not on our own selves and letting Christ live through us. This is simple yet profound, and we struggle with it, and we forget it. And I, I don't know if it's because we're, we're Baptists and we're afraid of the Holy Spirit sometimes. Uh, we're afraid to talk about it. But it's all in the Bible, and Jesus had a lot to say about it. And then we, lastly, uh, in verse 21, uh, not lastly, but almost to the last, number three, uh, another attribute we see of how we can accomplish these commandments is the purpose of Christ in verse 21. He says, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him. I'm in John chapter 14, verse 21. And I will manifest myself to him. So there's our commandments. A lot of people right now are battling mental stress, mental illness, mental battles because of corona, because of this pandemic, 
Everything's different. You can't even go sit in Wendy's anymore. That's terrible. You can't even do that. You, you cannot uh, go sit in Chick-fil-A like you used to could on a Saturday. You can't do that anymore. You've got to go through the drive through You can't go in Popeye's anymore. You've got to take that chicken home or eat it in the car. Chicken doesn't travel well. It, I mean, it just doesn't. You need to eat that stuff fast, right? Some foods travel well, some do not. And, and so it's just different. And I'm, I'm just joking about the food because that's what language a lot of us understand. But there's other big, humongous issues uh, that corona has changed our jobs. People's retirement is different. People, uh, a, lot of, a lot of things in people's lives, and often they don't talk about it. They're struggling, uh, and either they're embarrassed about it, which they, don't, they shouldn't be embarrassed because Jesus said in this life you're going to have trouble. But I've overcome the world, and I'm with you. But people are having major, major struggles. And I think a lot of people ask this question, well, I don't have any purpose to live. Do you know the suicide hotline in America, has the calls, amount of calls has gone up over 600% since corona started? 600%. So it tells me some people, these people are asking themselves, I don't have a purpose. Or I can't accomplish my purpose or for what they think their purpose is because of these circumstances in my life. And it, verse 21 tells us that one purpose is honoring God and keeping his commandments. And so this is why we have Jesus inside of us. We have God's purpose. The purpose for the Lord is in us because Jesus is in us. And when he leads us to accomplish these things... He knows how to do it. He's wise. Did you know that God has some great ideas? Do you know God has some great ideas? If you ask him, should you buy this blue car or this red car, and you need a car, and you've gone through, and this is what you feel like is a good idea, and so you get to that point, and you say, Lord, do I buy the red one or the blue one? I think there's a great wisdom in asking God to help you with that. And sometimes it's, hey, you're my child, and you, you know what? You pick the blue or red, whichever. God does that all the time because he's a father. He doesn't like forcing things on us. But sometimes he knows, hey, that transmission is going to go out in two years, and you need this car. So if we inquire of the Lord like King David did before we go this way or that way, God will give us a lot of wisdom. So we have a lot of purpose uh, and that helps us as we follow all these commandments. You say, my life's meaningless. I live in uh, Mississippi, this small state, and, and I just don't ever get to see my friends, and I don't, my life's so different because of corona, and I'm discouraged. Or maybe you're watching this and you're in a different state. We have a lot of people watching in different states, by the way, which is amazing that that can even happen. How does that even happen? But we're glad you're here. We're glad people are joining online, watching. And so you may ask yourselves, I need this purpose and just look to the word of God you have a purpose you have a purpose to glorify God to honor him with your life but also the great commission is not just for pastors the great commission is not just for missionaries in fact it's for every single believer that should be your great mission that's you should take that as a personal challenge uh, personal marching orders for the believer for you do you is this your personal is this part of your to-do list to help make disciples of all nations because that's on God's to-do list for you very clear he's, he's very clear about that and then whenever you struggle oh we struggle well broke that commandment oh man broke that commandment broke that one didn't love that person like I should have didn't love the Lord in that moment stress happens right you ever feel like you disappointed God Anybody ever feel like, oh, man, that's me a lot of times. I, I, I feel so, you ever felt like you disappointed God so much that you just blew it all the way and, like, God's never going to be able to use you again and, and he's so mad at you? He's not mad at you. He loves you. He wants you to come back to him and stop partaking in whatever you're partaking in. But God's character is to restore you 
so that he can use you and to bring you in the right fellowship with him. Now, he does get mad at people. God gets mad at his people. And he judges us and he does things, he takes things away from us to, to, for the purpose of restoration. That's why the Israelites had to be exiled. Is it because God hated them? No. He wanted to let them know, I'm going to be your God. And when you try to go separate, live your life away from me, this is where you're going to end up. And so he gave them some object lessons. And so when we feel like, oh, we've blown it, that's when we need something very special called peace. We need that peace. And guess what? The New Testament believer, we have that peace. Look at verse 27. Well, let's go back to verse 26 just because it's so good. But the helper of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The disciples were probably thinking, Lord, how are we going to remember all these things? We've been, you've been teaching us for three years. We don't have an iPad. We don't have a phone. We don't have a notepad. How are we going to do And he says, I'm going to bring these things to your remembrance through the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 27. He says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. They hung out with Jesus all the time. They saw he had this peace. Um, what, is, what is the movie, or the TV show, help me out, the TV series, I, I've mentioned it. Um, the Chosen, The Chosen. Some of you watch The Chosen? Just in this series that is fake, but it's based on true events, based on the life of Christ, you get to see the peace of Jesus. He never stresses out uh, the disciples it's just the New Testament it's based on stories out of the Bible. Just in this television series, you watch, Jesus doesn't stress out. When he's at a part, whether he's at a party or a wedding, he's just, he's just happy. He's just himself because he has this peace. And it comes from a fellowship with God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. But we, so the disciples saw Jesus have this peace, but they didn't quite have it. And so what Jesus does when he gives us that Holy Spirit He's giving us what he has to us when the Holy Spirit comes upon the life of the new believer. He says, my peace I give to you. He says, I've got this peace stirring deep down in my soul, and I'm going to give it to you, my child. I'm giving it to you. And we get that at salvation. That's why so many people that are strung out on drugs, strung, strung out on whatever, they hadn't slept in a year. You know, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, just when you get hung up on stuff and you just don't sleep good. And, and maybe it's because you're taking substances and you're jacked up and you can't sleep. And you don't have to sleep taking certain things. But eventually you're going to crash. Eventually you're going to crash. And so when, Jesus, when somebody comes to know the Lord, God truly saves them, a drug addict. They're radically saved. They sleep. And they start sleeping well and they're shocked. Like, man, this is amazing. Why is that? Because of the peace of Jesus. Because they get the Holy Spirit. They get simultaneously repentance and faith in Jesus, the gospel, death to life, Holy Spirit comes inside of them. Like that. Now, some denominations teach that the Holy Spirit comes later on, uh, I guess a few days later or whenever you have to pray and lay hands and all that stuff. And, but we believe as Baptists that the Holy Spirit comes to the heart and life of a new believer upon salvation. Upon salvation. Not upon baptism. Upon salvation. When they come from death to life. Now baptism is an expression of what God did inside of them. Baptism is a picture of the gospel. He saved them. He's washing away their sins. They're identified with Christ, death, resurrection, all these things that you know. So we get that peace. Do you have that peace tonight? Maybe your world is just still crazy, stressed out, corona this, corona that, the news, negativity, uh, so many things are being affected. I want to encourage you that tonight you have, made, you have available at your disposal the peace of Jesus. It's yours for the taking. But you've got to have that little word called faith to believe it. You got it, man. You got it. 
a woman of God, man of God, you got it living inside of you that through the helper. And he's with you. But you have to exercise faith to believe it. And so tonight, if that's you, if you're saying, oh, I want that. I need to sleep good tonight. I want that peace. Then I'm going to ask you to do just like what so many heroes of the faith have challenged the next generation is just accept it and believe it. Just tonight, claim it. Just claim it. Claim it. You know what? I want to claim by faith that I've got the peace of Jesus inside of me. I want to claim by faith that I've got the peace of God with me tonight. In my home, in my room, in my bedroom, in my bed. When you're driving your car, I want to claim that I've got the peace of God. Though my heart is frantic, I'm going to claim by faith that I have, through the presence of the Holy Spirit, the peace of God in my life. And if you'll do that, you'll probably add some years to your life. And your heart doctor probably would appreciate it. So this is how we're going to accomplish all the commandments of the Old Testament, all the commandments of the New Testament, is through the Lord. He's going to accomplish it through us if we will die to ourselves and let Christ live through us. I know this is old news for a lot of people, but it's good to be reminded of what we have in Jesus. We've got to remember that we don't have to go through corona alone. We don't have to do this alone. You don't have to face your mortgage all by yourself. You don't have to face the, the crisis, medical crises all by yourself. You have the Lord. He's with you. And you also have a church family that loves you and is with you. And that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other message to talk about. But you, who you have in Christ, I'm telling you, that old hymn, though none go with me, I still follow. You know why we can say that? Because he's enough. He's sufficient for the day. So may all of Christ be in all of you. May all of Christ be in all of you. I'm going to pray, and uh, we'll be dismissed. Why don't we do this uh, to have some interaction? If you have uh, the Facebook, which I know some people that don't have Facebook. Isn't that cool? Aren't those people awesome? I, I, those, that is, those are special, special people that don't have Facebook. My sister-in-laws have decided, Allison's two sisters, they're both married to pastors, and they've decided lately that they're going to get off Facebook maybe for a whole year. I don't know how long they're going to do it. but uh, So they're not even on it. And Allison told me that, and I thought, that kind of fires me up. That's kind of cool. I used to make fun of people on Facebook when I was in college, and then one night I was having my quiet time and I felt like the Lord put it on my heart that I needed to create a Facebook account. I said, oh, I must be listening to the devil. And I, I was praying. I mean, I'm in my quiet time and I felt like the Lord said, something in me says, you need to create a Facebook account. I was like, oh, no, I, I'm making fun of people that have Facebook. I can't do that. I'm going to look like a, a baboon. I'm going to look like a dummy. if I, I've been telling everybody they don't need to get Facebook and uh, I can't be the one to finally get Facebook. I'm, I'm telling you, I was in my quiet time, couldn't sleep. I, I battled. At 3 o'clock in the morning, still hadn't gone to sleep. I said, Lord, I'm, li I'm talking to myself. Well, I got up at 3 a.m., I was in the dorm room, King Cannon, Ron. And I'm sitting there at the desk, and I create a Facebook account. As soon as I created that thing, I got in the bed, and I go sound asleep. So that's my story, how I came on Facebook. And I believe God's used that social media uh, for friends I've had, reconnected, and it's been a ministry for me. And... Uh, I know people probably unfollow me on Facebook all the time because I just say a lot of stuff about the Lord. Uh, so it's a, it's a great ministry tool, and our church uses it, and it's helping us tonight. So praise the Lord that we have this uh, vehicle. Okay, so if you have a prayer request, I'm going to challenge you to type that in. Uh, I know you don't want to put something private on there, but if it's, you're okay with it being in front of all creation <laughs> or all the people that tonight are going to see that you can type that out and then I, I want to tell you I don't know if you know this but every single Wednesday night after the service uh, when I get home I go back through the Facebook comments and I always go through and I pray over every single one of those comments and then also Sunday mornings Sunday mornings I try to every single Sunday after lunch go back and uh like everybody that commented on Facebook about our service and try to connect with them. Sometimes I pray pray for them and uh, 
This is a great, great ministry. So please type out some requests if you want to. And then um, tonight, to, for the interest of time and to keep people from just staring at, a, staring at the stage, um, why don't, after, after the service, if you guys who are here physically, in person, have some requests, we'll share some of those uh, right after we sign off online, if that's okay. Um, and so type out those. And also, tell us how you're doing. Tell us how, how you're doing. Uh, put down, I don't know what you guys have been doing lately. If you've planted some flowers or uh, cleaned out a closet or changed a flat tire or put new windshield wipers on or fix your air conditioning or I don't know. We need to know how you're doing. So just communicate. Tell us what's going on. Uh, any prayer requests, it's good for us to have fellowship. Okay? We have 16 people right now live through Facebook. We don't know how many is on YouTube. Maybe not that many, but we don't know that. Uh, Roku, we don't know how many are on that tonight. And then on our website, I know Ms. Peggy watches on our website. Several others watch on our church website and also via the app, which is, connects to our website. So we have all those people. I think we had 112 views last Wednesday night from our Wednesday night service. So you never know. That was just Facebook. That's not counting all the other ones. So let's pray together if we can. Let's join together uh, through the power of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Father, we are here where your people. And God, there's so many requests. Lord, we thank you for good doctor's visits today and good doctor procedures and medical reports that are positive that we've heard about this week, but we also lift up those uh, going through very difficult um, diagnosis. And God, we lift up our friends, and we pray that you continue to be the great physician in their lives. And Father, we pray that tonight for us, we pray for our own selves, that we would have the faith that we need to tap into the power that's inside of us. The peace of the Lord is with us all the time. Lord, we mess up when we forget these simple truths. We, we, we get in big trouble when we stray away and start trying to live the life that you call us to live on our own strength. And so, Father, we, we ask for your help. God, we, we want you to grant us the gift of faith. So, Lord, we don't have the faith, but we believe you can help us. So, God, we want you to give us uh, the faith that we need to believe. God, we pray that you would bless the kiddos that came to camp this week. Thank you so much for all of the kids that came. Thank you so much for all the volunteers that helped cook food and help drive cars and help uh, take care of things and open up their swimming pool and uh, provided different things for this kids camp to happen. Lord, we thank you for what you did in those kids' lives. We thank you that they were all safe. Uh, we pray that you would just protect them uh, from corona. We pray that you protect them from the enemy. We pray, Lord, that all the seeds that were planted in their little hearts would just grow up. And, Lord, that uh, our little daughters of the faith would grow up to be uh, like pillars uh, adorned in a palace. And, God, we pray for these little sons to grow up, like what the Bible talks about, as righteous oaks, that these young men and women will grow up to fear you and to love people and to lead the charge in making disciples of all nations. Father, we pray for our church. Lord, that you give us wisdom for the future. God, that, we would, uh, that you would enlarge our territory, that you would expand our vision, that you would help us to be aggressive at reaching the lost people. Help us, Lord, to continue to be used, to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit as you lead us daily. Father, we pray that you would Take care of those who are isolated, who have not been able to come back in person yet to our service. God, pray that you would encourage their hearts tonight. God, we love you. We thank you for the privilege of all these rich treasures that we have through the helper that lives in us and who is with us. Help us not to forget. And Lord, should we forget, I, God, I pray that you would bring something into our mind. Help us to remember in some way what we learned tonight. 
God will give you all the glory. And all God's people said tonight, amen. Amen. Well, for those of you online, we love you. Hang in there. Be safe. Be diligent. Uh, we'll see you Sunday. I do want to give a, a quick announcement. Kids was this week. Amazing time. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it finished earlier this afternoon, about 2.30, it was over, and they're exhausted, they're going to sleep well for the next few weeks, hopefully, maybe not, uh, but praise the Lord for Lacey leading the charge of that, our children's director, and then all the volunteers, uh, so many people to name, we're not going to name them because we couldn't get to all of them, that's not why they do it, they serve the Lord, uh, but we did have one little girl that we know about that accepted Jesus today. Uh, and it was incredible. And she is a young lady that has not been coming to our church. So she came with a friend. So praise the Lord. And uh, we tried to talk her out of it a little bit and found out, man, this is real. God's in it. You kind of have to test the waters a little bit. And she sincerely, she understands what she was doing. And she, she prayed to receive Christ. And then we have another one of our children, uh, Miss Brindley. She's going to be baptized this Sunday, I believe. And she's previously accepted the Lord. So praise God for these two know about and there are several others that are thinking about salvation um, this week that they raised their hands several of them raised their hands and they and they had other conversations and so their counselors many of those times said hey we don't we think you're close but maybe not ready quite yet so pray for these children and all the seeds that were planted uh, we'll see you Sunday morning nine o'clock service and 1030 we're gonna have a fun fun time and also this Sunday morning uh, we're going to have the children that did the camp dance thing. Uh, they have like a theme this week, royalty. And they've got a little song that goes along with their theme. And they're going to, uh, I think, just last minute perform that Sunday morning uh, at 1030. It'll be online. You can see that right at the beginning of the service. Uh, so those of you that are going to small groups for the second service, you might can just tell your class you're going to show up a little late and, and pick your head. And, and watch those kids but uh, I do advise you not to sit on the first two rows to be able to social distance from all those children so we'll get them up here on the stage as many as we can cram but we'll see we'll see how it goes and uh, please if you are physically sick of any kind we're gonna ask you please stay at home just please if you're unsure just stay at home uh, if you are nervous about corona and it's gonna make you so nervous that you can't enjoy worship stay at home just stay at home and if you need us to come to your house and pray for you we'll do that we won't touch you but we'll do it from a distance um, if you need something please let us know the church office uh, call us tomorrow church office will be open uh, or you can also email any of the staff members um, and reach out also to the people in your class and different members your church family is with you and if, if you're going through a crisis and we don't know about it and you don't tell anybody, then we can't help you. Sometimes you just got to say, take your hand up. I need some help. I need some help. So hang in there. We're going to make it through this pandemic. Better days coming. And until then, we don't want to wait till we start really living for the Lord. We want to thrive through this season. We want to we do all we can to tell people about the Lord and to grow spiritually good week.